okay so i hope that everybody can hear me if you cannot hear me just let me know so today is day 15 and it is 12th october 2020 and we will be working today again on react and then problems and object oriented javascript so this week whole week i will be doing the react and redux and some basic stuff from next monday we will be start building the projects so from next monday we will start our real projects and i will be building about 1000 or more projects that will help you in your own day-to-day -day life or in your own web building everything will be in the react some will be in the react redux and some will be only in the react without redux so if it's a small application we can build everything in the react without using the redux part but if the application is bigger we have to use react plus redux okay so this is the task for this week and next week so on that day we were doing the redux part and in the redux part we uh, we saw that we have to import the create store and this create store is called with the parameter reducer that is this reducer and the initial value which will pass here in the state and this store then we can subscribe to see what are the changes in the store are and whenever we dispatch so this this curly bracket is actually called action so whenever we dispatch an action so we are dispatching the action it calls the reducer and in and the reducer is then returning the state which is stored in the store and then if we subscribe the store we can see what is the value of this state is so if we go with the if we go with the flow of the redux it goes like this we have component that is called view and from the view we dispatch the action we dispatch what we dispatch we dispatch the action and this action whenever we dispatch action it goes to the reducer and from reducer it goes to the store and whenever there is change in the store we get reflected in the component again so it's a circle it starts with the component we dispatch the action it goes to the reducer it goes to the store and it goes to the component again and again we dispatch some action it goes to the reducer it goes to the store and goes to the component this is the flow of the redux is and there is one more thing comes after the action we can add some middlewares these middlewares are nothing but functionalities which helps us in doing different stuff like ajax call so though ajax call is written by our our own code but it will not work if we if we don't write some middleware to handle the ajax call so generally ajax call is a promise which goes to the server and gets the result back and that promise uh, has to be properly handled and that is handled by some middleware which we will install in our application in future so just remember that middleware are some functionalities which helps us in doing different stuff one of the stuff is ajax call and there are many other uh, helper methods we require and we will be adding middleware for that so what will be the flow if we add middleware 
component will call dispatch component will dispatch the action and in the action after action it calls a middleware these middleware are automatically called we don't have to write every time that call this middleware call this middleware this is to be generic to be available in our whole project so you don't have to write anything in the middleware it is automatically you just need to install and it's a configuration we don't need to write a specific code for that and then it calls the reducer and then it says the in the store and then it will call component again so this is the basic stuff on that day we saw we created this reducer so if our application will grow there will be many reducer right now there is only one reducer but it can be reducer 1 reducer 2 reducer 3 reducer 4, 4. there will be many reducers and instead of uh, this reducer we have to call all uh, all reducers which we have in application and how to call that we will see in in a bit and we pass the initial value here there is another option to pass the initial value instead of passing it here I can pass the initial value here like state equal to 1 when I say default state equal to 1 and action will be default called uh, an object so when a state is equal to 1 it will take initially default value as 1 so instead of passing default value here it is better to pass a default value here in the state and the rest thing will work as it is and we dispatch like this but in our application uh, we will be dispatching but not like store dot dispatch there is another way but in reality we are dispatching store dot dispatch only so this is just an example which I gave you but when we go to the practical world when we go to project we just know we just should know the idea that we need the reducer and reducer has switch case statement and we dispatch the action this all thing three things you should know otherwise subscribe part you don't need to understand this part is just something we put one time and you have to forget that this also so you don't need to remember this every time so this is how we do the redux part and I will show you some practical uh, I will show you now how to really integrate redux with our react application and also uh, one thing I want to say is okay this there is updated we, we have reducer okay yeah that's it so uh, just remember we need the reducer and we need the action action is this part action is this part and then we need the store these all three things are needed in the redux part so we will be doing uh, the redux react integration now so I'm just commenting this part whole part what we did okay so I'll uncomment whatever we have previously okay so this one was our original one and this I commented it so let's try to see the steps to do the redux in our react application so I'll be doing all the steps now and I will be showing you that one so let me open the terminal so for the redux first step is we have to install the redux in our application I already installed but I will do it again since we have to do uh, the redux react integration so I'll go to cd react so here I'll do a npm install minus minus save and I'll say redux and react dash redux so these two things we need and we need some more things which I will just let you know what more things we have to install let me see what more part we have to install okay there is one more uh, package we have to install that is called the redux dev tool extensions extension this is one 
and we need one more thing that is called Redux Thunk Redux Logger <coughs> okay so we need these three things these one two three four five things for the Redux React integration I will put that in the chat So, what someone is, so question is dispatch is used to pass a value. <coughs> so dispatch is used to pass an object. It's, you can call it value, but uh, it should be object and it should have, it should have a type. Type is compulsory here to put. Payload is optional. If you needed it, you have to add it. If you don't need, you don't need it. So we have to pass this object like this. Okay, so uh, I will be writing down the steps to what we do for the Redux integration. React Redux integration. Step one. Step one is to install following packages okay so I started the packages I will write down here let it install until it install we will see what are the steps so one is the Redux, React Redux, Redux Dev Tool Extension, Redux Tunk and Redux Logger. These five things we needed for our Redux and React integration. And now the step two. We need to create we need to create store.js file and the contents of store.js file I'll explain in few minutes and call this store.js in index.js file so this integration is only one time and then you don't have to do uh, every time so once you start one project you have to do this integration one time so every day you will not do integration just do one time integration and then you work on your project and when you start a new project you have to do integration again but when we will be building our 1000 projects we'll be doing this only one time and all other projects will be the subfolders of our the main project so we we will do integration only one time uh, next Monday also today also we'll do next Monday also we'll do once we start our real project so this is the we have to create the store.js file then third step we will be creating few sample reducer create reducer file and create okay just create reducer file step 4 create action file one will be the reducer one will be the action create action file step number 5 create you don't have to remember all these steps you, I, you, I will show you how to do it just do it and when you are doing your real project you copy and paste whatever I show you so you don't have to remember or by heart all these things here this is the one-time integration create a file called as root reducer and include all reducers in it 
So generally we will be having multiple reducer file. We will be having, um, since our project will go grow, there will be many reducer files and we will be using all the reducer file and put it in this root reducer so that uh, we should have the data, uh, record of all the reducers, which reducer we are using it. So we should need this root reducer file also. Okay, so these are the step five. And if there are more, I, I think these are the five steps are okay. So uh, let's see the step two. Okay, we have installed all the packages. So we'll go with the second step. We'll call we'll call, create a file called as store.js. So let me create a file. So this is my source file, source folder. I will create a file called as store.js. Okay, so now here we will write the store.js file. So first thing in the store.js should be, we will call the import. Import of create store. This is the one which we saw in our Redux example. So it is a create store. And we will also call one more, uh, one more functionality called as apply middleware. And then I will call this form Redux. Second line will be, I will also import compose with dev tools from Redux. This is the extension which we installed just now, Redux dev tool extension. I will call compose with dev tool from this extension. Okay, what more, what next? Let's import import thunk from Redux thunk. We just now installed thunk. We will be importing thunk from the Redux thunk. And what this thunk do? It helps us to call the Ajax in our Redux application. Without this thunk, if you call the Ajax application, it will not work properly. So we need this thunk for Ajax call. Next thing we will importing is logger from Redux logger. So this will help us to see what is happening with our state variable. And so I call this logger. This logger is only for development purpose. Once you are done with the development, you should not call this. You can comment this. You can call this in production also, but that will be showing your state variable to the users. And if you want to show your state variable to user, then it's okay. But it is better advisable not to not to use this logger in our production application. But since we are developing here, we will use it. And once we, we go with the production, we can remove it. And next will be the import root reducer, the one which file I told you that we should have, uh, we should have uh, all the reducers in this root reducer file, so that all reducer calls should be in one place. I will call, I will create one folder called as reducers, and inside reducer I will call this file root reducer, and I will call this file here. So let me create that file, otherwise it will give some error. I will create a folder called as reducers and inside that I can call the file root reducer.js. So I will fill this file in a bit. Okay, so this one is the root reducer. Now what I have to do? I will create one function called as configure store. This will have a arrow function. 
and it will take some state we call it as preloaded state okay now I will be putting all my middleware in a variable called as constant middleware equal to so first middleware I will be using is thunk which I use here thunk and second second middleware I will be using logger so I'll be adding logger here so I'm putting both the middleware here in an array I will create another variable called as middleware you don't have to remember all these things this is one time only I just want to show you what is there in my store middleware enhancer is equal to here I will apply middleware so we added this middleware since we have multiple middlewares uh, we use this one apply middleware even if it is one we have to apply this middleware that is it takes the middleware and it do something internally we don't have to remember what it does we don't go inside this middleware and see what it does but it takes the middleware and use it in our application and I will call this middleware so when I put dot 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 that means we are taking this content and we are passing that content here okay so that's the meaning of this dot this is spread operator that will it takes the content of this array and put it put inside this apply middleware and it returns some another variable now I will add one more I will add one more variable called a store enhancers is equal to and I will put this middleware enhancer in an array so I put this in array just I put this in array nothing to nothing much now I'll create another variable as called as compose enhancers enhancer equal to this will call this compose with dev tool and I pass store enhancers so uh, I, I could have directly passed this middleware inside here but uh, maybe it may need some future development so I put it in this array and then I pass the store enhancer so um, otherwise I would have used directly this also right now with this setup but let's keep this as it is maybe we need to modify this in future so I just keep it in array and then pass the store and answer what this compose with dev tool do I will just show you in a bit when we run the application now final step is constant store is equal to create store and I'll call the root reducer so if you see if you see our uh, index.js file when we were doing the example of the Redux we were having this reducer and we were passing that reducer in the create store same thing is we are doing it here we are passing the root reducer so since we might have multiple reducer that's the reason I'm passing root reducer here in the create store and this root reducer will be having multiple reducers in it and we saw we have to pass the initial state here we pass the initial state remember here but since we have multiple reducers this initial state should be passed as null or undefined or something which is not exist or empty so that all initial state should come from the reducer initial value rather than this initial state which we have so all the initial state will go inside this state part and here we should always pass null or empty or something which is not there 
So here I will pass this preloaded cell. Preloaded cell is uh, is coming as null or empty. It, it does not have any value. But we have to pass this something. Otherwise, uh, it takes this parameter. We we cannot uh, we we cannot escape it. We have to put it. And last part is something we have to add the middlewares. And we have put all middlewares in our this variable called as compose enhancer. So I will put middleware here, compose enhancer. So this compose enhancer has all the middleware. And we put this middleware here. And then we will return the store. So we will return this store part. And then I will export default configure store. That is, I will export this function. So this is all about the store. We imported few things and we created our configure store and we exported the store. That's it. Don't worry about much of the store. This is just a one time, whatever I showed you, this is something you have to put it in all your application. This will not change. You will, the only thing will be you can remove the logger part in your production. Otherwise, this whole part will remain same in all your application. It will not change. And I will commit this file so you can, you can take it whenever you want it uh, from this store.js file. Now let's go to, we, what happened? It got stuck, okay. So we we did the store part, now we have to call the store part in the index.js file. So we have the index.js file. I will call the store from, uh, I will call the store in this index.js file. So we already have the import statement, I will add few more import. So what import we need to call? So the first import we have to call is provider from React Redux. We have to call this file, uh, this package called as provider. And we also need to import this store which we just now created. Import configure store from store. We created the store.js file and we imported these two things. Let's put it here. And now how to use it? The provider which I call from the React Redux, I will wrap around the app provider. And I will take this provider and put it after the app. And this provider needs one parameter that is called the store equal to something. It needs some store value. And what is the store value is, I will create one variable called as constant store is equal to configure store. So this is the configure store which I created function and now I'm calling this function here and putting in this variable and I'm passing this variable inside this provider. So the store will be the store. I can rename it to ST also, whatever I want. So this store is this, and this store is only the variable name which is needed. So these two can be same, or I can use same, same also. It can be separate or same. Okay, so this is the setup on index.js file. So index.js file done. This is done. We created the store.js file and and use it in the index.js file. We install these packages. We have to create the reducer file and the action file for testing our functionality, which I will do in a bit. And we also need to create the root reducer to make the things work. Right now, if I run my app, page it will give error because we have not finished all the steps so that let let's create more things let's go and go to the root reducer and create the root reducer okay let me 
take the content of root reducer okay so I'm in the root reducer this is also one-time root reducer work but whenever you add a new reducer you have to put the entry here so that root reducer know all your reducers so I will first step is import combine reducers since we will be having multiple reducers we need to call the combined reducers to combine all the reducers from Redux and then I will import all the reducers which I wanted so for example I will create two reducers for you to see say I'll call it as test reducer 1 from file test reducer 1.1 and I will also create another reducer test reducer 2 from test reducer 2 so I will be creating these two files and I will put two reducers in both of them so that you can see the changes and then I will create a variable called as constant root reducer is equal to combined reducers and it will take an object and then I will export default root reducer so if you your application has 100 reducer you can import all reducers here and put it here but right now generally a big application also have four or five reducers not more than that so let's put each of this in this object I can give key any name and value test reducer 1 for example and then I can give key anything and I can put test reducer 2 so test reducer 1 is mapped to T1 and test reducer 2 is mapped to T2 okay so you can keep the name same also if you want like this but for this uh, demo purpose I will rename it to T1 and T2 okay so this is my root reducer file now I'll create these two reducers to you for you to see how how the reducers work I'll create test reducer 1 and test reducer 2.js file and each file will be the reducer and it will be similar what we created in our sample reducer called this uh, the sample one which I created it will be similar to this one the one which we created this reducer it will be similar to this one so let me create uh, one reducer okay so let's go to test one reducer and here I will call as test one test reducer one is equal to an arrow function and then I export this so it will take two parameter one is the state and the action and the state state will have some default value which I will define here so for example my state in in our example we saw that we are passing the state as a one as a numeric value but when our application grows we we need the multiple values so we will not create a numeric value in our real example it will be the object like this and it will be having different key value pair for example data 1 initially I'll, I'll define null data 2 initially I'll define null and I'll pass this initial state as a default for the state and the action will have default of object an empty object and inside this test reducer I will put the switch statement 
it will take it action dot type and this type we have to define whatever case statement we want so for testing purpose I will add these two statement add and subtract and the default will be break and in the end I will return the state so whatever state I have here I will return that state here and since we don't have numeric value right now for the state we have we have the initial state so so we need to use that in the object format so for that we cannot use this like this so for example if we have the result value also and default is 0 I can use result here like this I will use the spread operator to take the state value and then I will say result is equal to action dot payload so only thing is whatever value is coming in the payload I am updating the result part of it if you see our this sample one I was updating this whole state with the result which I was getting but since in real application we will not have only one uh, state value it will be an object so we need to update the particular key value pair using this formula so this formula is that we have to take the previous state whatever the state we have that is this one and update the result with the new value which is coming from the action similarly in the subtract also I will be updating I will take the previous state and then I will do result equal to action dot payload but here we have to add it here we have to subtract it so here I will say state dot result plus action dot payload so whatever the result was there previously I will add the new value and in this case I will say state dot result minus action dot payload so the only difference So only the difference between this and the one example which we did here we were taking the state because it was only the numeric value and we were adding it but now with the reducer so with real life world we we have the object so when we have the object we have to take the previous state of the object and then we have to update the whatever key value pair we have to update here we have to update the result so I will say state dot result that is the previous value minus action dot payload many times you don't have this addition to be done here in this you can directly say for example in the real world you can also say this is the case of add and subtract so I'm putting this like this but many times we just get the data we don't need we don't need to do the sub uh, calculation here so for example if data one is coming I will say result state equal to dot 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 state and data one is equal to action dot payload so the all manipulation is done in action here we just update this data one to the action dot payload whatever payload is coming and I do then break so this is the real life example where we generally don't do manipulation here all the manipulation is done in, before it reaches here here we only get the data we update the state value and same thing with we can do with the data too I, I get the some data and I update the data too with the value coming from the action it's really little difficult to understand now whole thing but when we do the project it will be very smooth process and it will be day to day so you will be easily knowing what we are doing so today I'm just explaining but in real when we do a lot of pro projects this is something you know kind of baby step you will be very much aware of all things what we are doing it right now maybe this is the first time you may feel little awkward what we are doing but when we go with the real world 
we will do every day this so you will be very much uh, you will be very much known to everything what we are doing so for example in the test reducer 2 i copied everything from test reducer 1 here i'll say 3 and 4 and maybe here i'll say 3 4 3 4 and instead of subtract and addition I will take this increment and decrement part here I'll say set dot result plus 1 here I'll say set dot result minus 1 so this is the two reducer I created and I call these two reducers inside my root reducer and inside root reducer is returned with these two reducers and this is my index.js I will comment this part okay this is index.js let's see what remains so we are pending with the action file and we also created this step is done and the reducer file is done so the only thing pending is the action file for our whole process to work and we have one more step step number six call action and reducer in each component okay so how to call action file or reducer file in component that is what we have to see so before doing this part and this part let's see if our application gives any error or it's working fine so let me open the browser and see what's happening so this is my application running and I'll go to the so here is the here is our console.log no errors are coming and and application is running fine you won't see any change what we did for the Redux because we have not yet completed all the steps so let's complete all the steps now okay so now let's create the action file <coughs> so let me create the action generally the actions will be we can place anywhere in our folder structure but right now for testing purpose I will create new folder called as actions and put all the actions here but uh, in later project we will be putting it in some diff different place I will create two actions one is called the test action one dot js and also create test action two dot js well. so here we have to create the action actions are nothing but a simple function but it has some uh, another functionality dispatch in it which we will see right now how the action looks let me create one action for you one second okay let me create one action so I'll create I will export all the action like this export constant let's say action 1 I create a function called action 1 and inside this action 1 I have to return async function and async function will have async function will have two two parts one is the dispatch and one is the 
gate state. So these are the two parameters which it gets. One is the dispatch and gate state. Now how we are getting this? We are getting these two because of because of the thunk we included it and because of thunk we are getting we are getting dispatch and get state here in this function and inside this function we can write our logic whatever we want it so for example I will add the logic of so this is action I can say action 3 and then I'll create action 4 and same thing I will do it in the test action 1 I'll create action 1 and action 2 okay here I will dispatch if I go to redu reducers so I have one add dispatch so let's dispatch the add one in the test action 1 so here I will dispatch it's a curly bracket I will dispatch type equal to add and payload equal to whatever payload I want to pass here so maybe this value I will pass it here same thing with action 2 I will dispatch subtract here and the value whatever I am getting in here in this action 2 and if I go to test action 2 I will dispatch here I will dispatch here increment and I don't need payload here because increment automatically add one so I don't need that one and here in second part I will dispatch decrement here also I don't need the payload because it will automatically reduce the minus one here only I pass decrement so I created two action file with action one action two action three action four variable inside it and each variable is a function and each function has another function inside it called as async which gets the dispatch and get state parameters and we are using the dispatch from this parameter and we are dispatching whatever action we want to dispatch so we are we're done with actions now now we're done with action file now the last step which is there we have to call this action and reducer in our component so that we can take use of them in our component okay so let's go to our component and see how we are adding it so I'll create one more example component Okay, so this is my example component. So this is my example component. Let's see first, uh, I have to call this in our app.js and then I will show you how to integrate both so I'll go to example 5 and call the example now when I go to browser let's go to the example page so this is the example page and here I will be integrating Redux in this page okay so let's integrate the Redux in here so the first step is we need to we need to import something in this page so first thing import connect 
So this is the part which we will be doing every time. All whatever we did uh, was something which is done one time or few times, like uh, action we have to create few times, reducer we have to create few times, but the store and the uh, redu root reducer is one time and the integration on the index.js page is also one time. But this is the one when we are integrating in our component, this will be frequent one. So this you have to just remember uh, or you have to write down the step, uh, part which I will be writing here because this will be going in each component which we I will be building. Where I want to use the reducer functionality. So I'll say import connect from React Redux. So first step is to add this line of the code. This is the connection which connect between the React and Redux. Second line will be I have to create two functions. One is called as map state. And I have to create another function called as actions. Okay, so I created two functions, one is called map state and actions. And in the bottom here, we where we have default example, here I will write down, I will use connect. The connect which I created here. And in the connect, it will take two parameters. One is the state, this one I map state. And second, it will take the action. And we to wrap the component with round bracket. Okay, so now we added this map state and the action and we did this component, wrap the component in the separate round bracket. So this will connect the state and action to the component and this is the component. I, I, I know it's a little difficult to understand first time but when we do multiple times, it will be very easy for you to understand. And this map state will take, uh, it will give me state. So whatever state we have or in the reducer, these two, T1 and T2, T2, these two will come here in the state one. So if I want to do console.log, state is state. And this will return, map state will return an object and we will build this object in some time what this object will be. Right now I just pass the empty state and the action is right now. So action is not really a function, actually it is an object. So we have to just say object. This map state is a function, action is an object and this object we will fill in a bit. And everything will come here as a props. So I will put this props and see what props are coming. Okay, so this is our sample component page with Redux integration is there and we'll see how it looks on the browser. Okay, so when I open this browser, you will see state is coming as T1, what was there in the root reducer, and T2. And T1 has all the data which we have, and T2 is also having all the data which we have. And in the props, we see we are getting history, we are getting location, match, and static context. Also, we will also get whatever actions are there, that will also come in the props and whatever we return it here in the map state will also come inside the prop. So for example, if you see the state are T1 and T2 and here if I say T1 props, I just name it key to something and I will pass state dot T1 and I will say T2 props, here I will name it as state dot T2. If I pass these two like this, we will see props are having T1 
one props also, T two props also, which is nothing but data one, data two, result one, which is same as the state which we are getting it. But we cannot take use of the state in our page. We can only take use of the props. So whatever state we are getting has to be passed in the props like this. So like this, I am passing this state into this T one props and T two props, and we can access it in the props variable. We cannot really access this state. We can only access this state inside this map state part. So we have to return it as an object, and this object we can access it in our props. So I'm getting this T1 props and T2 props also, and whatever action I will be creating here will also be appeared in the props. So for example, if I have to take this test action one. Action one and action two, I will use like this. I will import action one, action two from. I will go to the actions folder and I will call the test one action. So this is the path. I am getting action one and action two, and I will pass this action one and action two in the actions object. Now, if I refresh the page, in the state I will get T1 and T2 only, which are going in the props as T1 props and T2 props. I am also getting action one and action two. So, if I have to call this test action one, here I can call it as like props dot action one, because all action one is going. In the props, though I did not put the so this error will go. I, I just put the code without any syntax checking. So this action one and action two are also going as a props. So if I have to use action, I can use the props dot action one or props dot action two. I can also take use of the state variable t one and t two. Using this T1 props and T1 two props, I can rename it same value. Here I change the name T1 props T2 props. I can rename it to same one also. So I can say T1 is equal to state dot T1. Then in the props T2. So in the props, I am able to use with the same name as the state variable which I have, but I cannot. To use the state directly, I have to use state using this T1 and T2 here in the props, and I can also call action one and action two in my props. I will also call action three and four from test action two, and put it these two inside. Put it inside the actions, and then. I see all the actions here: action one, action two, action three, action four. Now, in this component, I can call any of the action which I want. I can use take use of any of the reducer uh, value in this one to display the things. So, what will happen in the real life? Real life will happen like this: you call the action one, action one will update this result, and then we can use this result here in the props and display it to the user. You call the action two; it will also update the result of this T1 reducer, and we can display it on this page. You call action three; it will update the T2 result, and we can display it on this page. You can call action four; it will update the T2 result variable, and we can display it on this page, which we will see now in a bit how how to you take use of these two. But before going to To that part, do you have any question about uh, about our React Redux integration? So React Redux integration is done, and you don't have to by heart or remember all the things. So you to just follow the video or follow my examples and integrate it once. and you to understand how the things are working 
So if you have question, I'll clear your question. Before I will show you one example, how generally we call the action and how it is updated on the page. So if you have any question, ask me. Otherwise, I will go with that. Or maybe you can practice today and integrate all the shapes and if it is working or not, you can check and then ask me question tomorrow. Then also it's fine. Or if you have a question now, you can ask me. It, it's a little difficult first time because we have to do a lot of the steps. A lot of integration is going on. So we don't see exactly all the things in detail. So uh, if you have any questions, just ask me. Okay. Uh, sir, we will do. Yeah, ask. Sir, we will do persistence create and allow. Your voice is very loud. I cannot hear you. Can you can you refresh? Sorry, I'm saying. Uh, can we do uh, persist? Is something like uh, in Redux? Persist. Your yes, persist. So generally, generally this Redux is. Uh, uh, this whatever we are doing in the Redux, whenever you refresh the page, the things will be go away. So for example, result is updated with some value. When you refresh, it will go away. So this will go away. So in real, if you want to purchase something, you have to save it in the local storage. And when the page will load, you have to get from. So for persisting, you need the local storage. This is single page application. You have to go from one component to another component and you have to save the variable from one component to another component. So there is no persistence in the Redux or React unless you want to use local storage. So if you want to parcel something, use the local storage. Okay. Actually, I have seen somewhere in code uh, persister and store and they have used persist get something like that. So it may be third party, some kind of uh, utility, which might be using background in the using the local storage. So if you have seen, but the raw Redux React integration does not have persist. Okay, so persist use, basically we are just storing the uh, data. React Redux is storing on the data on the live, that is in the, when you are on the page. If you have to store on refresh, then you have to use local storage. And okay, persist is doing the same thing. Persist is not a term in the React Redux. That is, you know, third party tool may be there. It might be doing backend, saving it in the local storage. Okay, thank you. So now I will show you how we call the action and update the result in the reducer and see the result in the page. So for example, so this is my example file. I will create one button. I will show only one example. The rest we will do tomorrow, day after tomorrow to make it clear. So on click of this button, I will increment the value. So here I will say So on click I will create an arrow function and this arrow function will call props dot since increment is action 3 I will call prop dot action three when someone clicks this button. So there is an increment button, and when it I click this button, it will call prop dot action three. When I call the prop dot action three, what will happen? Action test action two is called, and test action two is action three, and inside action three it called the dispatch of this of this action that. 
this increment will go to the reducer that will be the test reducer 2 and in the test reducer 2 it will call this case statement and it will update the value of the result and once it is updated the result value the final state is passed to the store and in the store will pass that value to our component and so this T2 value inside T2 the result will be updated to 1 and we will see that result is updated to 1. So for example I will display that result here. I will say props dot t2 dot result. So this is the variable which we get when we update the we call the increment. So this is the value which we will get when I click the increment button this will get updated. Let me open this. So right now initially initially if you see the T2 has the result of 0 so you are displaying the display of the 0 when I call this action 3 action 3 will call the increment and increment will update this result to 1 so I will clear this and I will click this button so when I click this button you will see T2 result has become 1 and T2 result has been become so we can see the result is 1 and you will see this nice this nice formatted pattern where we can see previous state and next state and what we clicked we click the increment we call the action 3 which has the type of increment and the previous state was T2 was result 0 and the next state is result of 1 this format came the reason we are able to see this thing because we added the middleware and the middleware is nothing but if we open the store.js this middleware is nothing but this logger because of this logger I am able to see this nicely formatted what is the state previously and what is the state next and in the props I am able to see inside the t2 the result value is updated to 1 when I click again the result value is updated to because when I click the increment action 3 is called and action 3 update the t2 value of the result 2 and if we have this format in multiple components whatever I update in one component I will get this value in any number of components so that is why this is the global storage space where we save this value in one place and it can be accessed in other component also so this is one example how we take use of the reader we call this action this action will dispatch this object and this object is uh, go to the reducer and goes to this part of the uh, case statement and it will result whatever the value of result is this plus one and it will return that state and then this state will go to the component again in this part this this is the part where new state has come and that new state will go as a t1 and t2 which we can access in the component using the props so this is the whole flow of the redux is there it's little difficult initially but uh, when we do lot more projects it will become easy okay so I, I know this is the first day you are doing the Redux it's little hard to understand but if you go through example this example again and again you will feel confident in it and you will get lot of doubts once you do it and then we will resolve those doubts one by one so maybe in two three days you will be very confident on how to do the Redux So if you have question ask me otherwise I will clear one doubt which was raised in the chat on Saturday and uh, otherwise after that I'll close it and if you have question whatever I did just ask me okay so we will do we'll be doing this whole week today this one 
So it will become uh, it will become clear. I have one doubt related to Ajax. Okay, what is that doubt related to Ajax? So this Redux part is the main part which we will be doing this week. So it will be cleared uh, in two, three days. So don't worry if you have not understood completely the Redux part. I will be showing the things which we will do multiple times in our real project. That thing we'll be doing again and again. Otherwise, the setup part like store part, reducer part, and initial integration is one time. You don't have to use your brain. You can you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Ask. Uh, sir, uh, you have told that uh, related to Ajax, uh, one doubt was there. Uh, if we want uh, multiple calls from the server, so yeah, is Ajax is uh, good for that? How if many calls? Want, are there? Uh, how Hello? many calls? Uh, how many calls? Uh, four calls are there, sir. Get, post, put, and uh, delete. So you have to call all four in one one click. Uh, no, sir. Uh, if we want, uh, uh, it's a separate, separate call, sir. Sir, if you want to get a data from the server, so it will be the separate call. Yes. So that that's what oh. Ajax is meant for. You can you have to okay. call multiple calls only. Okay. Uh, we can't call uh, all the four calls in the same page. You can call Ajax. all the four page. You can call. Oh. Okay. 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 Thank you. Sir. Okay, so on that day, so I'm done with the Redux part, today's Redux part. Uh, though I will be repeating these things tomorrow, day after tomorrow, so that you can understand everything in detail, how we are doing the things. So I will be now clearing one doubt, which we have on that day. So let's say I have uh, one object. And this object has x value as 1, y value as 2, z value is 3. <coughs> now I will ask you, if I have to call the this x part, how will I call? I will call object.x, so it, I'm getting 1. Okay. Now, now I have variable called as uh, uh, forget about variable. Now let's say if I have to update this object with something new value, for example, obj dot m equal to four. So if I say object, we have x, y, z, and m, which I just now added it here. Now, I don't know what thing is coming. Uh, let's say in the server, uh, let's say I have a text box. Text box has name. One text box is name. And second text box is last name. Okay, so I don't know which one user is putting, maybe user is updating the name or maybe user is updating the last name. Okay, so now I have, if user is updating the name, I have to update this object with the name equal to whatever user will put value. So for example, if I say object dot name and user will put John, I can use this one. I can also say object dot last name is equal to Bob, for example. And then I will get name and last name, whatever I put it here. But I don't know user is now putting name or he is putting last name. So for I will create one key for example, key is I can say name. That means user is updating the name. Okay. Now if I have to object, uh, update the object for the name field. So let's say user is updating the name so I put the key equal to name 
and user is putting the value of name as uh, for example do so what i have to do actually i have to update this name with value of do how will i do that can anyone unmute himself at 10 i can can i do like this key equal to value is this the right way is this the right way to update the name field with the do value because i want to update the value of name with the do how will i update it whether object dot key equal to value will work or no anyone wants to answer it object dot name dot uh, key uh. Ob okay object dot name will work because we saw object dot name equal to this this one with the value will definitely work but now i don't know user is updating the name or last name so i put key equal to name so whenever user touches the name field i update this value key with the name or if user touches the last name text box i will update the key with the last name now i don't know whether user has done this or uh, last name it is dynamic so i put the key equal to name for example user has updated the name field so how will i update the object whether this one is correct but i don't know whether user has used last name or uh. so i want to use this key because i know in the key whatever user has touched i have updated that with the key so is this the right way to update the object or no yes but in the key we have to even give the last name also no let's say i don't want to update last name now for for okay, this okay. given moment i just want to update the name so this will update the name or no in the object so this will not update the name if i put this if i see object now you will see you will see another key has come because i use object dot key so it is taking the value of do it is not updating the name how to update the name when up name is the dynamic i want to update the name with the value of do and the name field i put it in the key how will i update this name field separate what separate how will i do means what should i write 3 dot 3 dot 1 okay so let's say what 3 dot object is equal to 3 dot like this yes okay then what then key equal to value this like this is this right way yes yes sir this is the right way. in this case only key will update now object dot uh, object dot key will update now it will update object dot key but i want to update the name and key key is a variable with the value of name so actually i want to update the name and i know the name is put in the key field because once user touch the name input i update this key with the name if user put this uh, input in the last name i will update the key with the last name so the key knows whether user touch the name or last name how will i update the object with the name if i do object dot key it will only create a new key and update with value but it is not updating the name i want to update the name so the right way to do is i will take the object and i will put the rectangular bracket in the rectangular bracket i will put the dynamic variable that is the key is equal to value so when i put in the rectangular bracket it will automatically convert key to name and it will update only the name not the key so if i do like this or enter it now if i see the object the name is changed to do why because whenever we have something dynamic variable in the object and we need to update the object it should go into the rectangular bracket i cannot do it with 
object dot key. Object dot key will only create the key in the object. It will not update the name. So now, for example, if my key is changed to last name, and now if I do object of key is equal to my new last name, then if I see object, my last name is my new last name. Why? Because I updated the key with the last name. So that means if I want to update this last name, I will put it in the rectangular bracket. And then update with the value whichever I want. So this was the question came in the chat and one person asked why we put this rectangular bracket. The reason we put rectangular bracket because we don't know what user is touch. It was dynamically updating coming. So whenever something dynamic comes, we need to wrap it with a rectangular bracket. But now question is, value is also coming dynamic, right? Value is also coming dynamic from the user. Now why we are not doing like this? Why we are not putting value in the rectangle bracket? Since value is also coming dynamic, is this right or wrong? You can put in chat also if you want to answer. But is this right or wrong? Yes, yeah, this is wrong. Why? So because we are assigning a single value to uh, which we are finding the key inside the array. Right. So that's why we have to put it uh, as a, a single value, not a, not with the array. Right, right. So this one also asked in the chat, since we are putting this dynamic value, why not we are putting wrapping this in the rectangle bracket? If we put this in the rectangle bracket, that means we are putting this value inside the array. So the whole thing will go here as array rather than the string. So if I do like this and I do object, you will see the last name is updated with the array with whose first value is do. It's not the string. So this part is wrong. We, we should not update the value with the rectangular one. We should only with do with the key because key is dynamic and object takes the dynamic only when we put in the rectangular bracket. But value is also dynamic, value is always dynamic. We should not wrap in the rectangular bracket. If we are wrapping it inside the rectangular bracket, that means we are converting a string to array and we are updating the value with the array, not the string. So this is wrong. We have to just update, put the rectangular bracket for the key and value will be like this only. And now if I see object, last name is coming as a string. So this was the question asked by someone. So I just wanted to clear this doubt. I remember, I, I know that this Redux part is little difficult to understand in the beginning. But once we do again and again this example, it will become very easy to understand. Today I did setup also. I showed one example also. So you will be little confused. Uh, what thing we have to remember. So for that, I will be doing 10 to 15 examples from tomorrow till Friday so that you should only concentrate on the part which you have to do regularly. So the setup part is only one time. You don't have to worry about those setup part. You have to only worry about how to use that in your example. So we will be doing 10, 15 examples from tomorrow so that you should understand how to do the Redux React integration and how to use only the Redux part without worrying about the setup part. Setup was, was setup part was done today. It is done, and I will do it this setup part again on next Monday, so that uh, once we start the project, it will be it has to be done once. Also, this Saturday and Sunday we have four four hour session from 4:30 p.m. to 8:30 p.m., and I will be doing all the same basic stuff of React and I will be doing the Redux integration and how to use the Redux in that one. So this will be the 4 four hour session on this Saturday Sunday. If anyone wants to join, they can join. It's up to you. Otherwise, we will be doing this whole continuously. Already joined, sir. Okay. So...